welcome this morning. Glad you could join us today. If you'd uh, stand with us, join us together in a song of praise this morning. Hallelujah. How are you this morning? All right. Why don't you go ahead and greet somebody next to you? We had a we had a, a great men's breakfast uh, this uh, last Saturday. The the Royal Rangers cooked us omelets and and raised a bunch of money for their ministry, and we're really happy about that. Amen. Amen. If you're a first time visitor here this morning, we want to wa- welcome you, and we want to invite you to fill out that uh, that uh, information card. 
You got something else on information? Oh, cards? sure. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of your uh, sermon notes this morning, there is a Family Connect card. And if you have not yet filled this out, any, everybody and anybody, not just first-timers, we want to make sure that we're able to connect with you in the best way that's convenient for you. So if you can just fill this out and just drop it in the offering, drop it off the info desk, give it to an usher at some point today, we would greatly appreciate that. And this is just another way that we can keep in contact and communication with you and are connected as a church family. So please, everybody, make sure we fill this out. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor Becca. Hey, um, we do have our church meeting today after service over in the fellowship hall, and we want to remind you that water baptisms are next Sunday. You need to sign up on the sign-up sheet out there at the information desk, okay? Okay? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you for this day. We come to uh, enter into your presence through worship this morning, and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way in this place. Lord, you're so faithful to me to see each right where we're at, and we, we expect no difference this morning. So, Lord, we just ask that uh, um, you would help us to set aside anything that might be concerning us, anything in, in our hearts or our minds that might uh, hinder our, our engagement with you this morning, Lord. We love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. We pray that you would be glorified in all that's said and done here this morning. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray, and everybody who agreed said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering.
Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you go before us, Lord God, that you defend us, Lord God, that you fight for us. Lord, we just have to put our trust, our faith in you, Lord God, and we will never be turned away. We will never be disappointed, Lord God, because you fight for us. You go before us, Lord. Lord, we worship you. We thank you that we can come together today in your presence, Lord, that we can lift you up, Lord God, and, and worship and praise together. Just continue to, to lift your voice to him this morning and worship him. We're going to continue in this attitude of worship this morning. This, this next song may be new to, to many of us, but it simply says, Your way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And let's just declare that this morning from our hearts as we sing that together. We love you, Lord. We thank you.
that is who you are. Even when I don't see, even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. When I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Give him glory this morning. Give him praise. Lord, that is who you are. You are the way maker, Lord. Miracle worker, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We declare that is who our God is. Lord, there is no one that compares to you. There is no one that can stand against you. Lord, we thank you.
listen. I've had something affirmed in my heart, and I don't know where you're at this morning, but I feel that the Holy Spirit is heavy in this place, but He wants to release you from whatever it is that's burdening you, whatever it is that's holding you back, whatever the answer to your prayer is. And we're going we're gonna to come and we're going to gather together this morning with our arms raised and our hearts abandoned and give it all to the one who gave it all for us. So if Michael will lead us in a couple more uh, choruses of that and, and the Holy Spirit just come and do what only you can do in us and through us this morning. We invite you, we ask you, we expect you to come and move in this place in the hearts of individuals, Lord, in the name of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, stay with arms high and heart of There is a joy of the Lord in this house. God has spoken, and he wants something to happen in this place this morning. I pray you pray with me. I pray that I can deliver it the way he gave it to me. Okay, I can get here. All right. Here, that one's there. Okay. James, the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus, wrote his epistle to the 12 tribes of Israel, saying, my brethren, count it all joy. <laughs> when you fall into these divers of trials. So I don't know what you're going through today. I know I have my own battles that I'm fighting. I've had two bouts of cancer. I don't know what you guys know. But God has helped me through them. Okay? But here's the deal. Everybody doesn't go, but he answers. He doesn't answer the way sometimes we want him to, but he does answer. James says, we are all, every believer in the New Testament church, his relatives. This is what he's saying to our church. We are all related to each other. He says the walls, the barrier, it's time for it to be broken. We are blood relatives because of the cross. 
Woo! That excites me. That excites me. Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Y'all say that. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I said, he says always. He doesn't say in the good times. He doesn't say, Linda, in the bad times. He said, what did he say, church? Always, always. And I want you to remember this. He says, we are the children of God. We have direct access to the creator of the heavens and the earth. He says, all we have to do this morning is ask. He says, in the name of Jesus, the almighty, the all-powerful God of the heavens. And he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, not Ruthie's name, not Pastor Mark's name, not Pastor down there, not, it's not Miss Linda's name, not Pastor Becca, but Jesus, the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, ask in my name, and I will, not maybe, but I will do it. The Father may be glorified in us. That's what Jesus wants. He says, with great joy, Jesus of Nazareth has given us direct access. We don't need an appointment. Jeff, I don't need no appointment. I don't need to go wait in no line. Say, Jesus, will you hear me? No, I can talk, Jan, to my daddy. That's my daddy. I can talk anytime I want to, day, night, midnight, I don't care. When I'm in trouble, I can call on my daddy and say, Father, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, as it is on earth. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to know we have assurance in him. In him. Church, we are not left helpless. We have a God that is with us. Now, here's what he's saying. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Here's what he told me. This is the key. He said, there is a supernatural principle in the shout of joy. He said, the shout of joy releases God's power to work for us. Woo! The shout of joy protects God's chosen. Are you God's chosen this morning? All right, that's what I thought too. We are his blood-bought people. He says, the purpose of the shout of joy is to serve as a weapon in spiritual warfare. This morning, we are going to go in a spiritual battle. I didn't come to play. I didn't, I didn't come to get your approval. I don't care about that. What I do care about, do I have God's approval? God, am I living for you? Am I serving you? Am I loving my brothers and sisters like I should? Am I loving my family like I should? You are my family. I take this very serious, guys. I, I don't play with this. I don't play. This is my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, every one of us. This is our life. And Jesus wants to come, and he wants to take these burdens. He said, I need these gloves. I'm back on the wall for tonight. <laughs> he says, has the enemy been plaguing you with anxiety, fear? Depression, resentment, insecurity, yeah, rejection, discouragement, sickness. What about financial problems? What about prodigal children like mine? And I need you to pray. I have a daughter that's a lesbian. I used to couldn't talk about it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't bring myself to say, that happens in my family, but it's real. 
is truth. Guys, it's time to take the walls that the devil has locked us in and said, enough, enough. I'm standing in the gap for my daughter. And I know there's many of you that have members in your family that's on drugs, alcohol, that's out there that we're standing in the gap. Said Jesus, like the word came today, is there anything too hard for our God? No, there isn't. So we've got to act like that. There is nothing. And so we're going to do, here's what he says. Clap your hands, 40, 47, 1 and 2. He says, oh, clap your hand, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord of high is awesome. He is a great king over the earth. All right, are you ready? Let's clap our hand and give the Lord of praise. listening and it says like at the battle of Jericho when God heard the shout when he heard that shout the wall came tumbling down so people of God I believe it in my heart this morning as we pray as we seek our God's face those walls in your life whatever they may be that the enemy Amen. Amen. I am too, sister. I am too. I am too. So, Father, we come to the throne room of grace this morning. We are praying that cancer will come down. We are praying that all the sickness and illness that has been in this church, God, we are praying that those walls will crumble in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nina Price, Elsa Carbon, Monica Diaz, Michelle Hahn, um, Darlene Figueroa, Lord, we're praying. Lord, intercede. We're interceding on their behalf this morning, God. Linda Sifflett. The Lord has an upcoming surgery, a back procedure. Pastor Joanne has a procedure coming up, Jennifer, Jennifer Bettis. She has surgery recovery at SJ Healthcare. Derek Schultz has an upcoming back surgery. Diane Gonzalez, God, we're innocent. We're asking for your intervention. God, you went and you said that you went around healing every sickness, every disease, God. And Lord, we're asking you to do the same here for our members, for the church, God, today, the body of Christ Jesus. We're asking for your help. And Lord, Fred is at Ramona um, Manor in room 27. Kathleen Cruel is in the convalescent home. Chuck McVay has a hernia. Uh, Carol Lewis has a hernia. Um, Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. This is nothing you already see. And Lord, you just said this morning, you said, ask, ask, and we, you will do it, that the Father will be glorified. Lord, Lupe Ortega, God, had to stroke Miss Jessie's mom. God, you can raise Miss Lupe up from that bed, God. There's nothing too impossible for you, God. Julie Schultz, bless her heart, she won't say anything, but God, we're still praying for her. You said if one is sick, one is hurting, God, we are hurting. If one rejoices, we rejoice. Julie, we are still praying for you. We're looking for your miracle in your body. Hallelujah. And then Pastor Mark and Tina, their, I guess their, grand, their parents, Don and Joy Curry, have heart and lung disease. Lord, go there. We send angels right now. You said if there's any sick among you, call on the elders. God, and we send your angels there right now. Lord, to touch those bodies, to heal those bodies in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I'm just reminded that you went to that cross. You took the stripes. You had all of those thrones in your head. You took the nails in your hands and your feet, Jesus, for our healing. Not only for our salvation, but for our healing. Lord, you said, just remind me. Just remind me. 
And that's what we're doing, God, this morning. And Jeff Grid's my mother, God, I understand, needs healing, God. And she has some practical needs. She needs a nurse. So, God, if you're an in-house nurse, if you know of anyone, please contact Jeff and, and Jeanette this morning. And, Lord, we thank you for everyone in this house. There's needs that haven't been spoken, God. But you know each one of us. You know the hairs on our head, God. Lord, we ask you to touch the brokenhearted. We ask you to heal those places that they haven't spoken, but they've talked to you, Jesus. Lord, we will give you all the praise. We will give you all the honor. We will give you all the glory. This we ask in Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen. Hey, show one of your brothers or sisters a little affection before you part company here, okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Ruthie. Feel like I've been to church. Is John here? Hey, John. Are you going to join us up here? Well, I just wanted to give you guys an exciting youth convention update. Um, your students are still gone. Um, I just, I felt like I was in service with them um, because ever since Friday, I've been having this Waymaker experience, and mm -hmm. it has just been this amazing, uh, exciting amount of joy, and it's because of prayers. And Lord, I just want to personally thank you. I have had the opportunity to see blessing after blessing and miracle after miracle for these 13 students to attend this full impact weekend, and I got to share that a little bit with them on Friday night um, in reference to this song, that song, and then when we get to service in Friday night, we're singing Waymaker, and then we sing it in the morning, and we sing it last night, but I want you to know, and I'm going to let them show you and tell you about um, what God has done in their life, but you will see them walk differently, you will see their, their continents be changed, and the smile and the joy that they have on their life, because I didn't take people who have never experienced God before and had, didn't have a relationship with God. I took people who were wanting more of God and who have maybe stepped back from God and were ready to say, now I'm going to choose to follow him. And they did that. And it was so cool last night in our in our prayer time, in our in our service, I got to see them do ministry. They were praying for each other, people they didn't even know. And here's what um, the key that the guy talked about. And it was amazing that all of these students, our students I'm talking about, there was um, the words were fear and anxiety. And all of them have some type of fear in their life and all have some type of anxiety that takes them over. And they were willing. And here's what went off the table for them. This is what went off the table. And you can see it in their faces. They no longer have doubt. They no longer have thoughts of suicide. They know how no longer, but they have hope. And his name is Jesus. And when you see them, you will see that in their faces. And I was praying, so I, and I texted them last night when I left. And I told them, you guys, it's not done. It's not over. God is still working and still moving. And it's because of you guys and the prayers, because our youth are the church of today. And they are, they're going to just do some amazing things. So thank you guys so much for all of that. And they'll I, they weren't, they're not going to be super excited to be home because they're in San Diego, but I'll be excited to see them again. All right. John, would you share with us uh, some announcements? As we promised you, we would uh, keep you abreast of uh, any new information regarding um, our situation, our transition, and, and all of that. And John Workman's going to be our spokesman for that. So thank you very much, John, for, for sharing with us. I appreciate that. No problem. And Becca, thank you for doing all you do with the youth. You don't get enough credit in my opinion, but we appreciate you. Thank you. The kids are definitely having a good time. My son went down there, and if you know anything about teenagers, uh, the word apathy rings true with teenagers, uh, or, or I would say lack of urgency. You know, teenagers just don't move quickly. They shuffle their feet when they walk, and they typically don't have a lot of energy unless it's something that's important. And when my son video chatted me last night, you could see there was a palpable energy uh, with that group of kids, and they were so excited. It was, man, it was awesome. 
Very cool. So in terms of uh, just information, we, we definitely want to keep you up to date uh, and apprised of any changes in, in, in terms of new information. I want to give you some advice and some tangible things that you can do that will be very important for you uh, outside of what I tell you. So if you don't already follow the church on social media, I would strongly encourage you to make sure you connect with us on Facebook for updates and information. It's very important that you're here Sunday morning uh, for our services and then the church website. So if you're not a social media person, uh, which is, is fine, you can always check the church website and we keep information up to date there as well. So as was mentioned in our previous meeting uh, on a week ago or a few weeks ago on Sunday, the church is in negotiations uh, right now with a few different places and we're making some small steps on that. When we have concrete information and more additional information to share with you, uh, we will do that. And I know Pastor Mark is gonna address uh, some things a little bit later, but I just wanna say this too. We have a responsibility to share appropriate information with you. And so one of the things I want to encourage the body with is unless you have direct information that you know is accurate and verified, it's very important that we not share anything out in the public that we can't confirm or that we haven't vetted through Pastor Mark or through the church board or through myself. So please make sure that we have accurate information, that we share accurate information, and that we support each other. I think the Lord has spoken very clearly today that we are a family and that family needs to take care of each other and that nothing is too big for God. So let's not create a story outside of what God has. Amen? All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Um, just uh, in addition to the, uh, what John just mentioned, um, uh, we've been a couple of weeks uh, since the meeting and already some wild stories have be begun to fly around, you know, and... Um, they're laughable, but it's kind of, uh, it can be a little upsetting at the same time, you know, depending on, you know, where it comes from and things like that. And so, here are the facts of the matter today. Here, here's what you can respond with confidently. This is the truth. This is the matter of fact. That this pastor and this leadership, beginning with Pastor Becca, John, and all the way through, Every department leader, every ministry leader are in lockstep to continue to move forward with this congregation, to serve this congregation, and we're going to do that together. That is, you can, we are not, we are not disbanding Vala Vista Assembly of God. The only thing that will ch change in the future is this address, is our address. That's it. We are moving forward together. If somebody's not here in a year from now, then that's a decision they made not to be here with us. And, and Lord bless them, and if the Lord's called them someplace else, that's it. But we are a family, we are the body of Christ, and, and we are not about to abandon 35 years of ministry over a, a street address, friends. That's not about to happen. And so I, I take that to the bank, and when you hear this nonsense out there, please respond in kind. And as, as uh, John said, please come to myself or to John with any questions you might have, and we're more than happy to share what we know with you if you have any questions, okay? All right, thank you very much. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles this morning... Turn to Philippians. Thank you. And when you're done there, you can prepare your tithes and offerings. <laughs> My body clock must be telling me we're farther into the service than we actually are. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We read in the Bible in uh, um, Corinthians that Paul talked about, um, I believe it was the Philippian church, um, that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. And so, Lord, we don't, uh, we don't ask anybody to give out of compulsion, but just out of a generous heart, a generous heart that you've given them, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy toward us. 
Lord, we just ask that you would receive these tithes and his, these offerings as an act of worship to you um, and, and an act of saying we trust you, Lord, to do what you're going to say you're going to do when we do what we're supposed to do. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. Let these tithes and offerings be multiplied like you did the fish and the bread that day and let it all be used for your glory and your kingdom. And we pray this in the name of Jesus and everybody who agreed said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, fellas, for waiting on us. Um, as we turn to, uh, again, as we turn to Philippians, um, we're in chapter 2. We're going to pick it up in uh, verse 12 this morning. But just by way of a uh, review, um, Paul, it's about 80, 80 60. Paul's in a, in a house arrest in Rome. He was arrested in Jerusalem, moved to Caesarea Philippi, and now he's awaiting trial in Rome. Paul's not sure what the outcome of the trial is going to be, but either way, he's rejoicing. He, he, he thinks he's going to live through this, but just in case he doesn't, you know, he, he reminds him that there's no guarantee of that. And in all of that, he is still rejoicing, remaining faithful to God and encouraging the, uh, the uh, um, church at Philippi. Now, the church has sent uh, Epaphroditus with a gift to Paul. And now, at this point in this section of Scripture, um, Paul is sending um, him back with this letter to the church to, to address the problems they're facing. And um, I think it's interesting that um, the Lord would, would bring us to the book of Philippians. In my mind, it was, it was kind of, well, Lord, where do you want to go after the first of the year? And, and I sensed I was hearing the book of Philippians. And I said, well, joy would be a good, um, a good uh, topic for us to, to maneuver through, especially this season of our, of our time together. And um, I think more than joy, uh, the Lord is... Um, um, speaking at least to me about unity and following in the in the steps of Christ and his obedience to the father and how the, and how that um, how, how God used that um, obedience and exalted his son um, we turn back we look back briefly you know in this our section our last section from last week beginning in about verse um, Five, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. And so we talked a little bit about that uh, doctrine of kenosis where Jesus laid aside his, uh, his, his divine powers and became obedient to, to Father God and, and allowed the Holy Spirit to come and work through him. Remember, Jesus is God, but he laid this aside to set an example for us that we might follow. Paul also instructs them, based on their union with Christ, to be humble and loving toward one another. And again, use Christ as a supreme a example of humility and obedience to God. Let's just pray real quick, and we'll, we'll move forward here this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you truly would, by your spirit, illuminate the scriptures to each of us this morning. Um, show us ourselves in your word. Show us you in your word. And help us to, to live according to your word. And we pray this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 12 with me. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now how much more in my absence... Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in this world, holding fast to the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain nor labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice in me. Again, um, notice the connection between um, obedi the, the obedience of Jesus in verse 8 and the obedience Paul's expecting of those he's writing to here. Um, Jesus is our illustration there, our example in obedience. And Paul encourages his readers to work out their salvation, work out their salvation, not work for their salvation. In the original language, work out means to carry, uh, to carry it out to its ultimate conclusion. 
much like we would work out a math problem. We work out a math problem to its ultimate conclusion, its final conclusion. That's what we are to do. Much like we work out this math problem, we are to keep working our salvation to its proper conclusion. God puts in, but we need to work out. And that is to bring to the surface what he has put in us. Uh, Pastor Aaron talked to the men Saturday, yesterday, about uh, the battles that we, that we face and that, and that we do battle, but the victory in that battle is in, it, is in Christ Jesus. And when we desire Jesus, when we, when we, when we seek after him as, as treasure, we begin to see victory in these areas of, of, of our life that we've been battling for. So many times we're focused on the, the, the issue itself, rather on the Lord Jesus, because he's the one that actually has the power to bring to fruition, to bring victory in those battles. And so many times we're just a little, our, our aim's just a little off. Our, our focus needs to be on the Lord Jesus and what he's able to do in us and through us. The NLT translates it like this, put into action God's saving work in your life. Put into action God's saving words in your life. And he says, do all this without complaining and disputing. Stop grumbling and whining. Any complainers here? Anybody like to argue? Notice he says to do all things. All things. It's, um, you know, I, I, if I could live out this one verse in my life, my dear wife would be oh so happy. If I could just stop complaining and arguing about things. I'm getting better, but I haven't arrived. It reminds me of a story about uh, a couple of fellows by the name of Joe and Bob. Uh, they worked together, and uh, um, Joe asked Bob if he would come over after work and help him with this deck that he'd been working on at his house, and so he, he was agreeable to it. And they just went straight over there after work, and uh, Bob goes to the door with Joe, and they enter the house, and, and Joe went straight over to his wife and gave her a hug and, and told her how beautiful she was and how much he missed her at work today. And when it was time for dinner, he complimented her cooking, he kissed her, and he told her how much he loved her. And once they got started out on the deck out back, um, Bob started to mention how much he fussed over his wife. And Joe, and, you know, and, uh, and Joe says, yeah, I started that about six months ago, and it's really revived our marriage. In fact, it couldn't be better. So Bob thought he would go home and he'd give it a try. And so Bob heads home after finishing with Joe, and he hits the door, and he, the door swings open, and he sees his wife standing there, and he just walks right over to her, and he, he kisses her, and he tells her how much he loved her, and he missed her today, and she just breaks out crying. What's wrong? He says, this has been the worst day of my life. Little Billy fell on his bike and hurt himself. The washing machine broke down and flooded the basement, and now you've come home drunk. <laughs> the point is, the point is, is we can be so negative that we can be in that habit, such in the, in the habit of being negative and critical and being just generally difficult that people won't expect anything else out of us. And when we do try to change, they don't know how to take it. I've had that happen to me. You know, I've tried, I've tried to be Bob. And that's, sometimes that's how it's reacted after I've been, you know, on a, going through a bad time and be, you know, vocal about what I'm going through, my displeasure about, you know, this and that and the other thing, you know. And when, when you just kindly get off of that and you just want to kind of turn things around, there's just like, whoa, wait a minute, how do I take this? But we can be that way. And he, Paul calls us here to be blameless and harmless as children of God. But we are not blameless and we are not harmless if we are complaining and being critical of others. The way we become blameless and pure is to stop murmuring and complaining and gossiping. I don't think we stop to realize what a problem um, gossip is in the church as a whole, not just Valla Vista Assembly of God, but in, 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 in church as, as a whole. And, you know, some of the things that I've been hearing off that, that came off of this campus regarding 
that, that, are, that have no basis in fact or truth whatsoever, and they get back here, and you wonder, why would somebody even start that? But the fact that the gossip chain brings it to here it just, just tells us that gossip is a problem in the body of Christ, and we need to be mindful about that. And, and I'll just refer you to the scriptures about what God says about gossip. Yeah, I'll let you study on that this morning, maybe, or when you go home today. Maybe just get your concordance out and look up all the scriptures that, where God talks about gossip and what the penalty for that is. It's, it, it's something that God takes very seriously. And, you know, I, for one, need to work on that. I need to work on that. You know, if we're going to talk about somebody, let's, if, if we're going to, if we're going to talk about what, what's going on with so-and-so, we should have a plan in place of how we can help so-and-so before we go over talking about them. This is what's going on with our brother in Christ. This is how we can help them come with me. But if we're just going to go yakada yakada, guess what's going on with so-and-so, that's not godly, and that's not being blameless. The way we shine, as he spoke of here, as Paul spoke of here, is not to walk in the ways of the world, which is what? Darkness. Many think be that because their testimony may not be as dramatic as the other guys, they think that uh, uh, they don't have um, the power to witness. But that's not what this is about. This is about living for Jesus Christ. Yes, our, our, our testimonies are, are powerful weapons in the hand of Almighty God. And we, we talked from time to time about guarding our testimonies, not allowing our testimonies to be tarnished in, in any way by, by backstepping or backsliding. But on the other hand, we're to be lights in this dark world and we can be light simply by living for Jesus not compromising when we're away from church, but living for the Lord Jesus Christ all the time. Paul rejoices when he hears that the believers of Philippi are manifesting their, their faith in good works. And remember, these believers are, are near to Paul's heart. He expressed that in the beginning of the, of the book here. The mention of the drink offering here is kind of interesting. We learn uh, from the Old Testament that there was a drink offering added to the burnt offering and the meal offering. It was never intended to be a part of the sin or the trespass offering. Um, what they would do is take a, a skin of wine and pour it over the sacrifice being consumed by fire, and it would go up in steam. And that's what Paul's saying. I want my life to be poured out as a sacrifice in the same way, and it, to, to the point where there's nothing left of me. I've, I've given it all to Jesus. We should all just aspire to have the mind of Paul and, and to what nothing more tend to offer ourselves completely and fully for the glory of Jesus Christ. And even though he's going through these struggles, even though he, he may not live through this, he, what does he say to them in verse 18? He says, well, 17, he says, I am glad and rejoicing with you all. I'm happy for the things that are going with you. And, and don't despair over what's going on in my situation. Rejoice with me as well. I think it was a good word this morning to rejoice in all circumstances. And this is what Paul, in part, is saying here this morning. Look at verse 19 with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy to you shortly, that I, may, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state, for all seek their own. Not the things which are of Christ. But you know he has proven character that he is a son, as a son is with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall come shortly. Remember again that uh, Paul's in prison and he's hoping to be able to send Timothy to them so, uh, soon. You know, and the fact of the matter is, Paul is making a, another little sacrifice here because, you know, he's, he's in house arrest and he could really use Timothy's help. We know this by Paul's comments that uh, they have a mutual love and respect for, another, for one another as well. He says, I have no one else like him. Unlike many, Timothy was not preoccupied with his own interests but was truly concerned for Paul and the welfare of others. 
Timothy didn't have his own agenda, but was seeking the Lord's agenda. And I ask myself, and I ask us this morning, how often do we sincerely, sincerely ask, what is it that you want from me, Lord? What would you have me do? What is it you're saying to me in this? What is it you want? There's a story about uh, Henry III. He was a, a Bavarian king. And when he first came into power, it wasn't long before he got overwhelmed and, and very discouraged about what it took to be a king and to be the king. And so he bailed out and he went to the monastery. And he told the abbot when he got there, all I want to do is worship and contemplate God. And the abbot said to him, well, you know, a monk's life is not his own. Are you willing to trust me in, in directing you? And he said, yeah, I'll do that. And he says, good. Go back to the throne and, and to the place where God has placed you and rule over Germany. And that he did, and he became one of the greatest kings of the time. In fact, on his uh, tombstone, it said, Henry the Th King Henry III, the king learned to rule by being obedient. And then again, I, I think of what uh, the Bible says about the Lord Jesus being obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And God has exalted him, highly exalted him, and given him the, the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those of earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That, that, that exaltation came by way of obedience, obedience to death on the cross. And what does Jesus call us to do? To pick up our crosses daily and follow after him. And I think, we, I think, I think that comment gets lost on us just a little bit here in the 21st century. You know, the, the, the cross was offensive. You, you may as well have been hanging a, a gurney up there to give somebody a lethal injection, or you may as well be hanging a, an electric chair up there, because that's, that the cross was an instrument of execution and of death. And Jesus said, pick up your cross. Die to yourself daily and follow after me. And in some, some of the Gospels, he says, or you cannot be my follower. You cannot. And so that, that's, that's important for us to remember. And when we look at the obedience of Jesus and we're to follow after that, I think we do well to consider that in our personal lives and, and, and how willing are we uh, heart and mind to be obedient to the Lord Jesus. Yeah, we fall, all fall short in so many ways, but are, we, but are we going back on track and saying, you know, Lord, forgive me for that. I repent of that. I want to move forward, and I want to walk in holiness, and I, and I want to be your servant. I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to commit myself to what you say I should do. That doesn't line up with what we hear in our culture. That, doesn't, that does not line up with our flesh, yet that is what we're called to, and we do well to consider that in our, in our own personal lives. Paul states that Timothy has proved himself serving alongside of him in the ministry of the gospel. And at the same time, Paul's expanding uh, Timothy's ministry platform through Timothy's obedience and faithfulness to Paul, his selfless service to others. At the same time, his, his, his platform is, is being expanded. Why? Because he serves as a good example. He's walking in truth. He's walking in the ways of Christ. And again, Paul was at the end of this section, Paul was waiting to send Timothy back as soon as he found out what his decision was, or excuse me, what the Caesar's decision was, it was concerning himself, and he, and he was going to send him back, and he was hoping to be there with them as well. Look at verse 25 with me. Yet I consider it, considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow sol soldier, but your messenger and the one who has ministered to my need. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick almost unto death. 
But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem, because for the work of Christ he became close to death, not regarding his own life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. You know, uh, the Philippians might have uh, sent Epaphroditus to attend to Paul on their behalf while he was incarcerated. Um, peep, and it's, it's very likely that that was it. You know, um, he might have been giving a gift, but he might have been there to, to stay on for a, a season as well and serve him and, and help him. You know, back in the, the first century there, people were very dependent on family and friends for their survival while in prison. Um, they, didn't, they didn't supply any of your needs. And Paul um, assures the Philippians that Epaphroditus went above and beyond the call of duty and that they should recognize his faithfulness to the point where it almost cost him his life. It sounded like he worked himself sick. And that, you know, and then that sickness came and he almost didn't survive it. But notice the words that uh, um, Paul uses to describe Epaphroditus. He calls him a brother. And this, this, this speaks of relationship. He calls him a, a fellow worker. Um, he, a co-laborer uh, working toward a, a common goal, working together for the Lord Jesus. And he calls him a fellow soldier. You know, and what do soldiers do? They stand, they stand shoulder to shoulder in the battle. And he says, therefore, I sent him the more eagerly, eagerly, and again, to hold such men in esteem. You know, the Philippians could have got the wrong idea in regard to, to Paphroditus, why he was coming back. You know, he got sick and gave up or, or, or any other things that, uh, that people start to conjure up in their own mind. Um, or maybe they felt, felt like uh, Epaphroditus had let Paul down and Paul was sending him back for that reason. But Paul's saying, no, that's not it. I'm, I'm sending him back because he's a good guy and I want you guys to treat him well. He's done, he's done me well. In fact, hold men like him in esteem. He's done a great job here. So as we close out here this morning and uh, we've been um, going through the, the book of Philippians here, um, I asked us the question, um, what is the basis for our unity? What is the, what is our, our love for one another really based on? What does that love look like? And how is it expressed? We say we love one another, and rightfully so, and I believe every one of us, but I think it, the question bears asking, okay, we love one another, but how do we express that? You know, we talk about love being a verb, being in action. How, how do we enact our, our love toward one another? What is our basis for our commitment to this congregation? What is the foundation? Where is the common ground that we all stand on? Well, of course, that answer is Jesus Christ. We do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We do all things out of love for Christ. And, as, and as, as we open ourselves up to receive the love of Christ, we're to be vessels of that love and express that love. Um, if you've not, you know, and that the, the answer to, again, all, the answer to all of this is just Jesus Christ. Everything we do is for the Lord Jesus. We come together and we worship the, the, for the, Lord, the glory of the Lord Jesus. We, we do what we do throughout the week to be ambassadors for Christ, to, to reach people, to be the Lord's hands and feet. All of what we do is centered, our very lives, our salvation, everything is centered on, the, on, our, on our King Jesus. And if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to do that today. I'm going to call the prayer leaders down here in just a little bit. And, um, and if you see the need for your salvation I really haven't preached a salvation message this morning. But if you're beginning to see your need for salvation, 
If you're beginning to see your need for a more intimate relationship with Jesus, when we invite the, the prayer partners down here, we want to we lead you in a confession of Christ. We want to agree with you in prayer for whatever your needs might be. But if you have not confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we sincerely um, ask you in the name of Jesus to make that decision this morning. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. But at any rate, we should all be following him. He is the head of this congregation and the head of the church. Now granted, he has given some to be pastors and, and administrators and teachers and all kinds of different lay people in the church. And regardless of our calling, God has not elevated one above the other. It's been said here for a long time that the ground is level at the uh, foot of the cross. And so it is. But, in, but now in those different callings, there are different areas and levels of responsibilities. And this is where we get a little tripped up sometimes. We're not going to be judged on how much we did at church or for Jesus. We will be judged on what he, the Lord Jesus, has called us to do. And how faithful we were to that which he has called us. And what God has called me to do may look a little bit different than what God's called you to do. But he's called both of us all the same. I had some friends that, uh, that recently went on a cruise and, and actually some others that are out on a cruise right now. And think about, you can think about church like this a little bit. Think about church, you know, as a, as a cruise ship. You see one big vessel heading to one destination. And you see all this activity on the ship. You got a captain upstairs driving. You got some poor guy shoveling coal in the, in the engine room. You got people cleaning rooms and making beds. You got people cooking. And you got other people just having a great time. But, the, but, but at the end of the day, whatever, whatever's going on on the ship, it's all going the same direction. And we can kind of think of church like that a little bit. We, 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 we get, sometimes I'm afraid we might get just a little too caught up in, in, in what the other person is doing or not doing. Now, I'm not talking about accountability here in, you know, in walking, you know, um, walking out our confession of Christ. But I'm talking about our activities you know, in, in, at church. And sometimes we can be like that, that, that ship, and there's all kinds of stuff going on, and there's all kinds of different activities. But the main thing is that everybody's on the ship, nobody's jumped ship, and that, that ship's going to make it to its destination, heaven. Amen? So, our unity is found in Christ and the message of the cross. And Paul said to make my joy complete by being like-minded. Paul's making a request to the Philippians here. And, you know, and I ask us this morning, how many times has, has there been a sound scriptural request made, not necessarily from this pulpit, but in general, a sound scriptural request made just to have it ignored or shrugged off or left for the other guy to do, whether it's spiritual or practical, and this is what I want to suggest to us this morning, that if you're hearing something, if you're, if, you're, if you're being presented with a need, and you're hearing about it, I would like to think that God has a hand in, in making you aware of it, and because God's making it aware, you aware of it, maybe he wants you to do something about it instead of passing it off to the next person. Just a thought. Jesus has certainly called us all to be an active, healthy part of the body of Christ, we plant ourselves in, a, in, in the congregation that God has called us to, and we grow and we pr produce spiritual fruit while there. And in this letter, Paul helps us to unlock joy regardless of our circumstances. In fact, I encourage you again, look, look back at verses 17 and 18. Think about what Paul's going through, and he's rejoicing. And he's not only rejoicing, he wants everybody else to rejoice too. This is a good thing. God is at work in all things for the good who love us and called according to their purposes. And on and on and on. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Oh, we read uh, from James this morning. Count it all joy when you go through trials of various kinds. This life is not easy. And the journey is a hard one. And Jesus Christ himself didn't make any bones about it. He said, in this world you will have trouble. He said, the path is narrow and difficult as the way that leads to life. And few go by it, but broad is the path that leads to destruction, and there are many that go by it. 
But again, Jesus has called us all to be an active, healthy part of the body of Christ. But in this letter, Paul again told us, among these other things just mentioned, Paul told us to esteem others higher than ourselves. And if we would all treat each other like it's a privilege to know one another, to know them, and it's a privilege to work with them, how would that change things in the family of God? Not just here, but in the community. Not just here, but in the community. Could I get the worship uh, team to come up? And prayer partners, will you join us up here this morning too? And I want to invite you again. If you, if you have a prayer need here this morning, we don't want to leave without praying for you. Um, and if you feel that need to confess the Lord Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior, we want to invite you to do that. We want to agree with you in that and encourage you in that. Um, there's no special words to receive Jesus. Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And you're it. <laughs> Come in my life. And thank you. But again, we were instructed to do things without grumbling and complaining. And, you know, and many times there are those who want to help out in ministry, but they can be a, they can be a little negative. Kind of like the teenager John was talking about this morning. You know, when asked to do a, a chore or a help out in the family in some way, they whine and complain. So the parent gets mad and just says, get out of the way, I'll do it myself. And leadership in church needs to watch out for that kind of thing. That kind of attitude as well. Well, I don't want to listen to the whining and complaining, so I'll just do it myself. But that's not what we're called to. Hallelujah. So this Timothy and Epaphroditus were brothers in Christ who displayed characteristics that Christian servants today should strive to emulate. And they were available to serve the Lord by serving others with humility. Would you stand with me this morning? Come on up for prayer. We'll worship a song and then I'll close this out for prayer this morning.
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and uh, we pray for wisdom and guidance as we move forward as a congregation. We pray for unity, Lord. Jesus, you prayed uh, um, in the book of John that uh, for, for the church, for believers of this day, that we would be united, that we would be one as you and the Father are one. And so I pray for that unity right now, Lord, that we'd keep the unity of the Spirit, O oh God, that you would help us and you would guide us and work on our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray for people that are, that I pray for our commitment, that we would be committed first and foremost to the Lord Jesus Christ and his desires for our lives, and that we would be committed to one another and service to one another. Lord, that, that we would shine like stars in this dark world and our Father in heaven would be glorified. Lord, I pray peace. I pray provision. I pray protection over every home represented in this room. And I thank you for everyone here today. And we pray all this in the name of Christ Jesus and everybody in the house who agreed said amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. We have a store in just a minute.